Hello everyone and this is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling on February 14th, 2013. And just to be quick and to the point about this, uh, honestly I felt that this Impact was just an okay one in the terms of just uh, you know, in the terms of how they built the show, uh, built the show in general, uh, and most of the show was built around this whole, you know, who's going to be the next number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, and they made the f they made the four matches and the eight competitors that would be in and be in that attempt for that uh, title shot. Um, all in all, that uh, all in all, the matches themselves were very good, but you know, two of them ended in like. Uh, two of them ended in uh, cir circumstances that you know would pretty much just eliminate eight, uh, four of those eight with uh, the Samoa Joe Kurt Angle match ending in double disqualification because of the aces and eights, uh, the aces and eights uh, attack, and Bobby Roode and Austin Aries because of the uh, interference by Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez causing the double countout. Um, otherwise, the uh, otherwise, the matches in there were generally pretty good. The Magnus Christopher Daniels match uh, was very good, though very weird that they decided to put Magnus inside of this spot, uh, inside of this spot for a shot at the World Heavyweight Title. You know, just considering the fact that he is, um, he's not that relatively that big of a star to even uh, really be deserving of a shot, and. Uh, I think they were just going more for the UK pop at that point, which is okay. I mean, the match itself was good, and this should actually help Magnus hopefully continue to further and build that character, and hopefully it will make him, uh, maybe they'll turn him face with this, or something in that sense. It's, uh, I think it did good for him to have that match. It just felt weird that he was put into this uh, situation in general. Uh, the RVD James Storm match. Uh, once again, very good match ended with, uh, of course, ended with James Storm, you know, um, ended with James Storm winning the match, and it, it came off as really good. Uh, you had the, uh, another kind of awkward situation was the, or not really awkward, just weird that they put it in there, the, you had the three boot camp, uh, UK boot camp, win, uh, not winners, but, uh, you know, the other three competitors that didn't win, they were put into a match against Jesse, Tara, and Vel, uh, not Velvet, but, um, and Gail Kim. Uh, the match itself wasn't too bad. I mean, but all the competitors seemed to do really, uh, really well. The newcomers really did they did a decent job in the sense of working a really good match. It just seemed weird that you would give TV time to the people who did not win this UK boot camp versus uh, potentially giving more TV time to the uh, guy who did actually win it the week before. Um, and then, of course, the making of the Fatal 4-Way Elimination Knockouts title match the next week with, uh, for next week with Gail Kim, Tara, Tess Mocker, and Velvet Sky. So that, that was pretty much that same thing. It really came off weird to me that you would have those three put onto the TV for that, uh, for that point in time. But, hey, that's what they went with. I found it to be a little bit weird. Um, honestly, the ending of the show kind of came off as lackluster in my mind. Um, you have Hogan going out there to announce the, uh, to announce, you know, who's going to be the person going for the World Heavyweight title. Uh, not, you saw the four matches from before. More likely, you could really only choose from the two matches that had decisive winners. And also, you saw a few backstage segments where Brooke Hogan was, you know, you know throwing Bully Ray's, uh, name into the hat for getting a shot at that. And he was going to go out uh, out there to announce it. Of course, it seemed like Aces and Eights was going to attack Hulk Hogan, uh, prompting Bully Ray and Sting to come out to chase them away. And honestly, uh, like I said, you don't end up getting the announcement in the end. Oh, that's, fi that's fine. You'll get that announcement next week. But in terms of, you know, it was really a, a quick segment right at the end of the show. It didn't really do much of anything um, outside of, you know, pretty much get over the exact same obvious that, you know, Sting and Bully Ray are going after Aces and Eights. And, and of course, Hogan's one of the uh, also going in there as well. And it just didn't come off all that great in my mind. Overall, so overall, I, I make I say it's an okay show, mostly because the matches themselves. I didn't feel like, and you got some continuation of storyline with uh, 
with aces and eights with Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe, keeping them in there. Also, the Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez versus uh, Bobby Roode and Austin Aries. You got a little bit more continuation in there. It's good to see that they're not going to just, you know, shove that feud under the rug after the after the uh, tag title match. You'll more than likely see at least one more match with that. So that's always a good thing to see. Um, but overall, and the matches themselves on the show, I felt were really good, uh, were really good again. But just overall, it did not come off as a very good show in my mind. It just came off as an okay show. So, yeah, yeah, that's my review this week for TNA Impact. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you definitely, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and we'll see what happens next week with Impact.